I've been an atheist since I was about eight or nine. And um, when I went to secondary school, by then I knew about natural selection, the Big Bang Theory, carbon dating, and the Earth was four billion years old. And so my poor RE teacher, I was the bane of his life. And looking back, he was a bit thick. Right? He was one of those teachers that I thought, oh, fuck it, I'll just keep my head down. He, he, you know what I mean? He came in on a motorbike and played table tennis all day with the Div kids just to keep... You know what I mean? You know the sort, don't you? And he hated me. He hated me because I was smart and I wouldn't let him get away with any bollocks, right? So when he said things like, and God made the heaven and the earth in six days and uh, the earth is 5,000 years old. I'm, no, it isn't. No, it's four billion years old. That is why, how could he do that? God can do anything. Well, why did he do it in six? Why did he do it in five? Let's, let's push him a little bit. Let's, you know. And he was saying that um, everything that happens, God does. He's done everything. Everything that happens, he means to happen. He's on top of it. He's everywhere. And everything he does is good. And I went, well, that's clearly not true either. Why are newborn babies taken from their parents? They're innocent. What, why are some people born into abject poverty? And he went, because God moves in mysterious ways. That is the theological equivalent of going, look over there, ooh. <laughs> it's not an answer, is it? We swear on the Bible in a court of law, still. And if the judge was to say to you, how do you account for the fact you say you're home asleep at midnight, but we found your DNA at the scene of the crime, and you went, I move in mysterious ways, good night, it won't wash. <laughs> This is how stupid this teacher was. A kid asked him, he said, Sir, why do we swear on the Bible in a court of law? Clearly, the answer is, if you believe in God, if that's your God, you believe in him, you believe he's watching you, you get a guilt trip, you don't lie. He hadn't worked that out. So thinking on his feet, he said, um, because every law of the land is mentioned in the Bible. I went, no, it isn't. No, it isn't. He went, no, it is. Somewhere in the Bible, every law of this land is mentioned. I went, what, well, even video piracy, you fucking... <laughs> One critic, who I know is religious, said, oh, Gervais deconstructs the Bible. That's too easy. I think, well, it shouldn't be. If you believe in that, you think it's a serious doctrine, it shouldn't be too easy to deconstruct. You can't do it with a maths book. You can't look through a and go, listen to this. <laughs> listen to oh. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line. What cunt wrote that? He said that... Um, God is everywhere and in everything. He's solidly through the universe. And I came prepared. I thought, this will end it. I came in like a little smart ass and went, Sir, is God in a vacuum which has been scientifically proved to have nothing in it? He went, Yep. <coughs> <laughs> That's it. I thought, Well, I can't win then. So I started saying, Is he up my ass? <laughs> is he up your ass? <laughs> the clever stuff hadn't worked. I was going, sir, is God up all our asses, <laughs> Including Richard Gears, it must be crowded up there, mustn't it? <laughs> the New Testament is founded on the belief that Jesus is half man, half God, born of a virgin womb. And I think that particular little rumour <laughs> came about with Mary on the back foot. Awkward questions about the old pregnancy from Joseph. <laughs> You're pregnant. You haven't been... No way. <laughs> well, how could this have happened then? Two ways. <laughs> One... Uh... Oh, oh, I know. Remember when I was washing in the Sea of Galilee and I, I, I splashed up some spunky water? No? Uh, uh, <laughs> no spunky water. Uh, uh... Oh. Oh, what, I, what about the baby is half God? <laughs> and everyone went, yeah, all right. <laughs> but everyone's entitled to their opinion. And if you believe in God, you're wrong. <laughs> everyone is entitled to their opinion. You never see that as much when you're famous. Everyone tells you their opinion. You don't ask, but they tell you anyway. And 99% of the time, it's all good. But a few weeks ago, I was uh, writing with Steve Merchant and we had a break for lunch and we went to a sandwich shop just in central London. I got my sandwich. I was waiting outside the shop. Steve was still inside, haggling. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And I was pretending to be busy on the phone, texting and that, and people were walking past. And it was fine. They were just going, 
Oh, it's, it's, bloke, it's bloke from the office. Oh, yeah. I go, oh, look, it's what's his name? Oh, yeah. Uh, you having a laugh? <laughs> Except one bloke that went like this. Mate, this isn't the telly. I can see you as well. What are you doing? <laughs> and he decided to come over. But he wanted to let me know that he wasn't impressed with me just because I was off the telly. So he overcompensated. So he went from Mr. Magoo <laughs> to this. <laughs> All right, mate. All right. Sign that for us, will you, mate? Yeah. Who's it to? Stick it to Johnny, innit? Yep. To Johnny, best wishes, Ricky Gervais. Cheers, he went. Cheers. Well done with extras. Cheers. Office was shit. <laughs> I didn't ask. <laughs> but he said one nice thing, one not so nice thing. That's life. And I don't know him, so I had no comeback. I said, oh, I like your shoes. <laughs> but your glasses, mate, you look like a cunt. <laughs> they did. They really did. And he was smaller than me. <laughs> I've never asked for an autograph. I remember when I worked at the Students' Union, we got a royal visit from Princess Anne. And uh, I knew what would happen, and I was totally right. Because I was one of the managers, um, I had to do the meet and greet with about six of us, six others. And she came in and she went, and what's your name? Ricky Gervais. What do you do? I'm the entertainment manager. Oh, good. What's your name? David. What do you do? I'm the bars manager. Oh, good. And down the line and out. And yet, on the day, all the women in the office were going, oh my God, you're going to meet the princess. Oh my God, what are you going to do? Oh God, what's going to happen? What's the best they thought could happen in that scenario? She's going to come in and go, what's your name? Ricky Gervais. What do you do? I'm the entertainment manager. Wow, this has been fucking brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> do you want a castle? I thought, do you want... <laughs> my dad was a labourer all his life, right? And in the mid-70s, about 1976, he worked on this big construction. It was um, building a headquarters for an American building firm that was coming over to England called Metal Box. And it was big news in the Redden and Berkshire area because it was going to give jobs to like three and a half thousand people. So it was to be opened by the Queen herself. And knowing this, they had site visits and they had to do all this stuff. And my dad was telling me um, they had to build a special standalone toilet, never to be used apart from the, the Queen's visit, which put an extra £10,000 on budget which by today's standards is about £80,000. So the day comes, he goes to work, the visit happens, he comes home from work, I went up to him and I go, how did it go? And he went, she didn't even use it. <laughs>